there's always somebody behind the wheel. Yes, I'm glad you said it. Dirty clean. Dude, I said this like five years ago, dude, and I had, I've been having the same thing for like every year I have the same thing. This weird brushed metal fake scuff is bad. We used to have things that are actually scuffed and it looks kind of dirty. That's the whole point of it. But these things, we, look, this brushed metal, like, like, hold on. Like fake scuff shit, like that. It, it's sort of annoying me. Fake scuff, dude, I, I'm not crazy. You can see it everywhere. The vaults should be Shut important up. to everyone. What? Come up to the surface one day and restart it's civilization. Everybody has that. Five months soon. Can you tell me what's happened in the last two hundred years? Holy shit! Like a lot of actual a chaos. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. Send me here. Send me here. Send me here. Whole thing. Hey, but it's been like for a long time though. I'm just getting tired of it. it makes everything look the Ain't same. Ain't much stays clean up here, Volti. Well, now that is how you Guys, it's everything. Look at the whole decor. You don't, you not get this feel over here, everywhere, everywhere. It, it, it's, it's the whole thing. A small drop. Uh, I'm gonna remind them. Really really I, 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 I can't. I don't want to go on movies and fuck it. I'm, I'm over it. This, this chat is my game. Whatever, dude. All right. Have you ever been watching the newest Hollywood blockbuster and think to yourself, why does 30, this look so seven, clean months, and almost months, fake? Yeah. Today, the pursuit of higher quality images with 4K, 6K, 12K cameras is all anyone talks Wait, about. Hear this. Digital filmmaking has revolutionized the craft, ushering in increasingly sharp, pristine, and flawless imagery. But why do we now look at better images and think that it looks worse? Even if we can't quite put our finger on why, we just know that something doesn't feel Cheap right. CGI. Why does Saving Private Ryan from 1998 look better than Hacksaw Ridge from 2017? Why does Lord of the Rings from 2000 actually look better than the Rings of Power, even though it, it came out cheap. 20 it years later? Or why does the Batman look better than everything else? Why do modern movies look use, so clean? They, do we stuff, as an audience want perfection? Or do imperfections add character and authenticity? We'll or see. more importantly, what can filmmakers do to make their films more authentic? Let's dive in. Wait, I want to actually know First that. of all, this topic goes way beyond the film world debate of film versus digital. It is true that film and digital both have totally different looks, but I've also seen digital look like film, and I've seen film look like oh, digital. this is disgusting. By its nature, film is less clean and something we're used to seeing in those incredible cinematic masterpiece films. But in the right hands, digital can Chat, blend perfectly. This is why Spider-Man 1 looks so fucking good. Chat, go look back at the scenes, chat. Hold on. We did this last time. Hold on. I'm not going to pause the video a billion times, but look at some... Look at Spider-Man 1 scene. Look how sharp the imagery is and whatnot. Or the train one, or... This looks a tiny bit odd because it's just old, right? But it still looks really good. Like, dude, dude, I know I'm nitpicking, it's very small stuff, and I look like I'm schizo, but just like, just like the shoes, the shoes and the sock and the pants, this is something at the time that you used to wear, like, this is, it just feels like, oh yeah, this is like pretty much like me in high school, like, just, it's just what it is, it's not perfect, or nice, or clean, or brand new out of the box, like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, this looks a little bit goofy, but it is all, like, come on, come on, bro, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, it is a bit old. The I just use the, look how good this looks right here. Is the same example as last time, man. I love this shot. He's just a kid. <laughs> what the fuck? It looks like 32 or some shit. It's, I don't know. I, just, I think it looks really good. Anyway, back to the video. It's good to have you back, Spider Man. Let me back Spider-Man. Oh, classic. I want to watch it, though. Or even replicate film. 
David Fincher, who is a master storyteller with films such as Gone Girl, The Social Network, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and so many more, loves working with red cameras, which Z over the years have kind of developed a reputation of having somewhat of a digital look. And I've even heard some cinematographers refuse to use them. Yet none of his films look digital in any way. If I didn't know, I would say that all of them were shot on film because of how authentic they look. Yet The Hobbit, shot on the same red camera, looks like a cartoon. Uh. Cinematographer Steve Yedlin, ASC of Knives Out, Looper, and The Last Jedi, challenges us to think of a camera not as a look maker, but merely as a data collection device. And that the aesthetics we desire are determined predominantly downstream in the processing pipeline by what we do with the data, not with which instrument collects the data. This shows us that capturing your story on film doesn't simply make a beautiful, authentic experience Wait, for the audience. Does it mean you have to make that choice deliberately though? And that film, you don't, you don't make that choice, it automatically gets there though, so it's kind of easier? And realizing that the power to control how your film looks is ultimately in your hands and not the tools we put in our hands. That is where we start. Okay. Now you might say, well, why not just capture the cleanest, most pristine image possible to allow for maximum flexibility in post? There are film stock emulation Pause. plugins and software that gives us tools to bring in imperfections. So why don't we all just shoot that way? Well, there are elements that that we can't change in post, such as camera choices, lens choices, filters, lighting, atmosphere, all of these things filmmakers must decide while filming. It all comes down to choices. We would argue that the best filmmakers that land classics are ones who make bold choices and stick to them. Filmmakers like Denis Villeneuve and his choices on Dune, uh, or Matt Reeves' Who? choice to dirty up the frame practically in The Batman. These are still industry giants that we look up to, yet in their own words, they say their choices might get them fired. Yet they stick to their choices and sometimes win an Oscar for it. If you begin to see your camera as a data collection device, your first choice is lenses. Filmmakers have many lens options available to them, but the choices break down to these main factors. Modern or vintage, anamorphic or spherical, prime or zoom. Now there's a lot more to it, but that's the heart of it. There's a growing selection of vintage glass rehoused in modern housing so that the metadata can be carried through to post-production. But a vintage set of lenses will have unique characteristics per lens and color reproductions will be different across the whole set. Films like The Batman, The Hateful Eight, Joker, and others specifically really choose vintage glass that were actually used in films from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Tarantino actually resurrected and retrofitted a 60s vintage ultra Panavision lens that hadn't been used since Khartoum in 1966. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 also used the exact 40mm Panavision lens on its Venice shoot that was used in the very first Mission Impossible film. The Batman used alpha anamorphic lenses that fell off drastically from the center focus and the edges of the lenses were soft and brought the attention to the center of the frame. Compare this to the RE Prime DNA lenses used on countless productions like Rings of Power, Hijack, All Quiet on the Western Front, Peter Pan and Wendy, The Witcher, Men in Black, oh. Solo, Ant-Man, and countless others. Kill me. You'll see a vast difference just with the lenses themselves. Most of these examples are heavily graded I, and I stylized, but if we look at these wide shots from All Quiet on the Western Front, there's a slight vignette from the grade in post, but underneath, the color is super pristine, crisp, and clean. Something that doesn't seem to match a gripping World War I story from the trenches. I was and even though it's still a fantastic film, imagine if All Quiet on the Western Front was shot like the what Batman. What an immersive experience it would become. Bro, Batman. Batman's Dynamic range and incredible digital sensors combined with advancement in color grading allow for infinite zones and touch-ups on footage today where images are technically perfect, but really just flat. Many times you can tell they're in a studio lit with LEDs, unlike films that used natural lighting in a simpler grade. Great cinematography is all about depth and separation through lighting. The biggest mistake I see in filmmaking today is thinking that they should add more light to make the image look I hate better. The, I hate the blur and, and it shit technically and the focus. does look better by not having shadows on faces or to remove any darker areas in scenes, but does it actually make it better for us as an audience? 
Let's Jeff, look at Ticket to Paris. Jeff, I, I feel like you miss out on a lot of the, the behind anything. And it, by center focus too much on the characters, I feel like it's as valuable, the background and the atmosphere, and whatever is going on on, on the focus. And it's lame as fuck. Does it actually make it better for us as an audience? Let's look at Ticket to Paradise. Look, it's like it's the almost as if comfort was more important than the visual results. The film looks technically perfect, details in the shadows and the highlights, exposed and graded well, but is it too perfect? These Hollywood icons are out in the bright sun, but they're not sweating or squinting. We don't want to pay to see unpleasantness, but it comes at a cost where we just don't buy that these people are actually on an island. We can feel the negative fill that's systematically added to create depth, just like we see in Emma as we cut from this wide shot to this medium shot. The negative fill increases because the crew can now bring them closer. We start to no longer feel authentic and just feel fake. The Batman was lit very dimly, even too dark for some audiences, but their use of lamps and lighting added to what really feels like a realistic Gotham City. It's dark. It was lit like you were standing right there. Whether you preferred the lighting or not, you were right there in the middle of Gotham City. A film like The Batman can't look like Gerwig's Barbie, Lerman's Elvis, or Parker's Ticket to Paradise because of audiences' expectations. But you can't argue with the fact that The Batman looked better than all of those films. We all love Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, but comparing them to The Batman are still two vastly different images. Okay, good point. I was gonna shit on it, I was gonna get mad. Which leads us to, to get visual mad. effects. Modern movies are well, generally- Well, because Nolan did it, 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 it's done by choice, and I think he achieved exactly what he wanted with it. And I think, I think the result was uh, enjoyable. No, it was Nolan's choice, and it was good. More reliant on visual effects than the previous century of films shot on film. Get Shooting sizing. imagery with little to no VFX allowed for more choices to be made in camera because you're shooting the world right in front of you rather than building it later. VFX heavy films often need basic, even That's plates and modern garbage. lenses Jesus that digitally Christ. connect with the camera to provide metadata are highly effective in streamlining the process. This was very important to Rings of Power, and many blockbusters utilize countless different effects houses to hit their deadlines, so it's best not to complicate the workflow. Yet we can return to the Batman and Doom, the latter being very effects heavy, but their vision was solidified in development and all choices push a unified style and design forward and I did not get Doom lost in the VFX. The Batman took a practical approach, shooting in the LED volume and trying to capture as much as possible in camera through the glass rather than adding it later on top of the glass. This is a distinct choice that technology like the volume can offer filmmakers to let the lens bring all the elements together. Which begs the question, how can I make my films look authentic? Well, or better yet, what have filmmakers done to authenticate the world that they're creating? One of the main elements of authenticity is dirtying up the frame. Now this is a term in cinematography that means exactly what it says, to take the frame and dirty it up. The purpose of this is the idea of putting you in the shoes of a character. Again, authenticity. This can mean actually dirtying the physical frame and lens, or metaphorically with props, actors, lighting, and blocking. It doesn't always mean interacting with the camera, because usually the oh, camera is invisible, unnoticed by the world and characters. This could be shooting through something like windows, over someone's shoulder, oh, or even just adding- Jack, Isn't that why Jurassic Park feels so fucking good? A lot of times there's a lot of weathering effects, and a lot of things happening, and it, it, they dirty the fuck out of it. But it's so good because that's what the movie is, yo. Elements to like the when composition. it's raining and shit. This scene from the Batman could be a masterclass in composition and the dirtying ones, the frame. The old ones, not the new ones. This right here is what we're supposed to be focusing on. But we have an out-of-focus table on the bottom, a plant taking up almost the entire left side of the frame, multiple lamps, people in the background, people walking in front of the camera. This is not sloppy. This is purposeful and authentic. It makes you feel like you're really there. But sometimes, dirtying the frame does in fact interact with the camera. Rain splatter on the lens in the Batman, blood splatter in Children of Men, lens flares, even condensation on the lens in The Revenant hmm. makes the audience aware that there is a camera capturing the moment, further connecting the viewer to the world that they're watching. Almost voyeuristic, 
In fact, in The Batman, Greg Frazier actually put silicone on glass and put that on the lens. This would make sure that raindrops would actually interact and the lens itself would get smudges. Talk about dirtying the frame. Sometimes the camera becomes the point of view of a character like we experience in the first Mission Impossible, The Batman, or even being on the field again in Children of Men. The point is, as a filmmaker, don't be afraid to get dirty with your framing. Instead of asking, how can I improve this shot? Ask yourself, what lights could I turn off? What can I add to my frame to be more authentic? How can Chad, I block this scene differently? Chad, what if you saturate the market full of garbage uh, uh, movies or whatever, and you keep doing garbage, and it does garbage, right? Then it's, it's cheaper, and then you have more garbage, and it's, that becomes the industry standard, though, no? I think that's what's going on right now. Don't be Everybody afraid says, Yo, to guys, not be Let's perfect. just do garbage, and everybody what does garbage. What these films have shown us is exactly what we're craving as an audience. Even if we don't know why a film doesn't look right, all of it comes down to authenticity and choices. Authenticity should be sought after, not perfection. Oh. To sum it all up, film is both an art and a business. And when we say that modern movies look clean or fake, we're not necessarily saying they look bad, they're technically perfect. Perfectly exposed, perfectly focused, perfectly lit. You see, Lit big up, studios bro. avoid risk, and I believe that this plays into a big part of why modern movies look the way they do. Indie filmmakers seem to have a vision that drives their art regardless of a big paycheck, me, which is why we see more soul in independent films than we do out of bigger blockbusters. The best examples that we see of a unified vision throughout the entire process to escape hey, that clean and fake look begins with choice. Making a choice for your vision and sticking to it, not playing it safe. Audiences respect that, and if you make movies that you want to see and not movies that you expect others want from you, then you could find your audience and your film could end up cemented in cinematic history. Okay, this, if you'd like this to learn more about how to take fucking... your own projects and stand out from Jesus, the competition, you can check out our full course at TomorrowsFilmmakers.com. We have over 1,200 training videos and over 100 hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking taught by leading professionals. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the video. I'll link it in chat. That was a good video. I enjoyed it. I really like that he chose the Batman as a big this point of the, the the point of uh, 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 for his arguments. I am so glad to be here with the I think that image was so fucking good. I really enjoyed it. I rewatched it the like a month ago. Which is all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the plot sucked. It's why I said I said last time as well. That's why I had my take uh, about the Batman. Is that the in my opinion, the Batman didn't, didn't stick that much as Batman. It, they just, it, they, I, I think that the Batman, they failed to give Batman Batman. The, he was missing Batman, dude. I, I, I really think, I know that's, that's the point because he's beginning and whatever. He's missing the Batman effect, which is sometimes a little corny and a little, whatever, but it's still a superhero and he fails to do that a lot of times, dude. Like, it just kind of sucks. It becomes too metaphorical and not practical enough as a Batman. Hey Pete, you probably Batman is yes, one philosophical, yes, by nature, because of what he does, but also practical in, in the way that he does it. In the way that he interacts with his world. That's that's Batman, but right? he's was missing that. Looking for a, a job now, right? Um, Dad, maybe you can help him out. What other skills do you have, Parker? I was thinking of something in photography. Perfect. Who do you mean is that? Snyder. Alright. 